with search engine optimization and marketing experts Robert O'Haver and Caleb McKelvin, powered by the Robert Palmer family of companies. Hey, 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 and welcome to another episode of Search Talk Live. Glad you guys could listen in today. Uh, we are, if it's your first time tuning in, we talk about everything digital, search engine marketing, search engine optimization, content marketing, social media, you name it, we can talk about it. Um, and you can call into the show live at 855-722-0006, option one. And with me today is my co-host, Caleb McKelvin. How's it going, Caleb? What's going on, Rob? Man, we have an awesome show today. It's so yeah. good to be back in studio. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in, uh, listening to the show uh, each week, interacting with us on social media and everything. We, it is very much appreciated. Yeah, now some of you have heard the news because I got big news about it and tweeted it. Really big news. But Search Talk Live starting in April is going to be national on iHeart Radio. Right. How huge is that? That's pretty awesome, man. We are so psyched because our listenership is just quadrupled and all yeah. kinds of stuff. No, man, we've had, <laughs> uh, you know, we've always said it. We started out as, we started this out as kind of like a little fun thing to do yeah. and did it every week. We didn't know how long it was going to last. Uh, we ended up, man, we've had awesome guests. We've had awesome content. Our listenership has been awesome. Audience has been great. And now... With the help of the Robert Palmer family of companies, we're going to be on a heart radio. Yeah, and we're going to be starting to take sponsors. If you want to sponsor the show, you can yeah. email me at robert at searchtalklive.com, yep. and I can give you information on that. Uh, we have a demographic of basically agencies, SEOs, content marketers, uh, the, the perfect demographic for any digital marketing company Absolutely. Out there. So, yeah. Um, you can email us there. And uh, Caleb, who do we got with us today? And I'm extremely excited about the show today. Um, if you're in digital marketing, content marketing, you probably know our guest today, um, Mr. Sujan Patel. How are you doing today? Great, great. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. We really appreciate you joining us. Um, we kind of want to get into it. Uh, I, I feel like you've had your hands in, in a lot of things. Uh, an entrepreneur uh, is kind of general to use, uh, and me kind of describing what you do won't do it justice. Can you tell us a little bit about who you are, kind of where you come from, and, and what you're doing now? Yeah, so I am, I've been doing digital marketing for about 13 years now. kind of stumbled upon it when I first launched uh, an e-commerce website and Surprisingly, no one visited the site. So I stumbled on SEO and digital marketing and have been doing it ever since. Um, currently, I am doing a few things. Um, I am the co-founder of two software companies. One is called contentmarketer.io and the other is narrow.io. And I am pretty active in just the entrepreneur and, and, and the marketing community as a whole. I write a ton uh, for sites like Forbes, Inc., Entrepreneur, and my personal site, Susan Patel. And uh, I'm always, I'm a very curious guy naturally, so I'm always testing and, and doing growth hacks and, 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 uh, and writing about my learning. So, you know, be sure to check them out. Yeah. No, oh, absolutely. Um, I will say, uh, I'll kind of give you a little, kind of promote you a little bit. Uh, we kind of talked about it earlier. I've been a fan of your work. Uh, get your emails and, and the things that you write and the things you talk about. If you are new to content marketing or want to know how to, you know, what content marketing is, how to better your efforts and improve your strategy, uh, this is the guy that can get you that information and a lot of great stuff. So uh, definitely awesome job on the work, man, and, uh, and and really good stuff. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, no problem, no problem. Okay, now we'll get into the real questions. What, no, one, go one ahead. thing before you get into the questions, I wanted to mention too, if you have questions and you don't want to call in, you can go on Twitter and do. Hashtag, what is it we decided on? STL chat. STL chat. Yes. And we will answer your questions yes, live. Yes, we'll there. get your questions to Sujin. Uh, a lot of good stuff. We do, we've do. we already had a lot of good questions rolling in. Um, some of the questions that I had, we'll kind of lead off with. Um, I, I, I think that there's an inaccurate idea of what content marketing is. I think a lot of people kind of invest the time and then don't see any ROI on that. Uh, kind of what's your definition or explanation of what content marketing is and what kind of uh, goes under that whole umbrella of content marketing, how a business can use it? Yeah, so content marketing in general, and that's a great question. Content marketing in general really is you're leveraging some form of content to help market your business, to make you either an authority for branding, 
storytelling, anything of that nature, um, you're essentially leveraging it to to market. And what I feel um, when you when you look at an, when you're looking for an ROI or any type of return, really you have to think back to consistency and then also um, kind of effort. So I, I see a lot of companies fail at content marketing because they forget the marketing part of content marketing. So they right. write a lot of great stuff, but then they don't really do anything with it. And it's right. the same thing as launching a website and not doing any digital marketing. You're not going to get traffic naturally. You, you have to build that up. And so um, in order to get that ROI, you have to go and first and foremost, write the proper content for your audience that's going to be towards some people that people find interesting. So that means you have to do the quality game has been up because of how many people are doing such great things. And content could be a video, it could be a podcast like this, it could be anything. It doesn't necessarily need to be a written form. Um, the, the other thing is promoting it, right? And so going out there and getting the word out, right? And, and, and actually... Um, maybe doing ads or some way or yeah. shape or form, getting the word out. And then the last thing is bringing it back to, okay, you got the word out, you got the traffic, you got really good content. Well, what are you going to do with that? You're going to collect leads? How are you going to bring that back to your business? And then um, the simplest way I find is just collecting email addresses and nurturing them. And, and Caleb, I think that's how you got on my list is that you probably subscribed. And, yep. and, and I, I did a few basic things. You know, I, I'm, I have my hands busy in a lot of different things. Um, so I do the bare kind of, well, I do. I call it the bare maximum, the thing that's going to get me the best results with the least amount of effort yeah. because I'm doing so many things. But, but anyways, at the end of the day, I'm collecting email addresses and I'm nurturing, and, and that's how you get the ROI. Yeah. And, uh, and and you know, there's many ways to measure it, but I think the the odd the traffic, the number of, like visitors and traffic is one. The number of mentions or links you get um, to your content or to your website as a result of your content is another way. Number of email addresses and then sales and revenue i mean you can actually tie it back in at some point to to that and when when you're looking at that you're probably if you're just starting out don't expect results for six to nine months it takes time to build that audience yeah no absolutely and you you hit on many points in there and i think i don't want to touch necessarily on all of them but you can kind of break down content marketing i think one area where a lot of uh, content marketers and companies struggle is really understanding the type of content that you need to put out for your audience, what they're looking for, how are you going to attract them? And I think that's something, you know, understanding your demographic. When I go on your site, obviously, I, I believe, you know, I'm your audience because you're talking to content marketers, digital marketers. But when when somebody's really trying to narrow in or find these ideas, how, how can they find the ideas that their, their um, audience is going to interact with and attract the new audience inside their demographic? How can they come up with those ideas or what should they be doing? Yeah, so here's here's my little secret. Uh, first is find the players that are, you think or, or you admire, you think are doing a great job, and try to mirror what they're doing. Yeah. Try to. It, it might. It's not going to be the long term thing, but it's the old school way of how to write a book. You, you rewrite something else, and eventually you're going to start to come up with your own ideas. And that's page one when you start to do that. And so, first is you know wh why I'm saying this is you want to take action. Mm -hmm. uh, as you start to take action, you're going to naturally notice uh, if you're curious or a marketer, you're going to start to like. How do I do this better? How do I get more of this? Then you actually start to write the best stuff or the, the right things. And so um, first and foremost, it's thinking, coming up with an idea that your audience will like or, and love really, meaning love is that they'll share it and scream it from the rooftops, right? I mean, maybe not scream it from the rooftop, but like if they send it to a friend, that's yeah. something that they love. Like that's a piece of content people would love. Right. Um, and I think... There's a big difference in the ROI from when you write something people would like versus what they would love because right. they would. Uh, so writing with that kind of promotion in mind, and that, uh, and the, so the second part of this is, so you wrote something people love. Now it's how do you mix in something that is promotable? Meaning, how are you going to get the word out of this? And so I try to have at least two or three ways I can promote a piece of content, and one of those ways maybe I build the email list. So something I do every day is. I want to collect emails. Um, that's one way. Now I have to think of like two other ways. Sometimes I do Facebook ads and I spend maybe um, a few, you know, a few hundred dollars or maybe even fifty bucks just to kind of like get the word out. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I email people, but the point is, you have to kind of 
um, you kind of have to get the get get the um, get the word out somehow. Yeah. Um, email is a great way. Maybe it's quoting influencers. I found that like mentioning three to five people or citing them, whether it's a new quote and you get them to contribute a quote for your specific article or some you cite them from previous things they've said on the web. Getting them to participate is a key part of you know getting them involved and in essentially help getting their help to promote your content. So yeah. again, a couple ways, and then then it's actually writing the content, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, everything I've just said to date is uh, to, so far is, is not even anything to do with writing it. Right. I'm assuming anyone here can write the content or help get help. You can use freelancers and things like that. I recommend d- working directly with the source. And I have a trick to help you kind of speed things up. So as I mentioned in the beginning, you want to f- mirror the people that are, you're, you're, that are doing a great job. Well, why not just hire the writers that are doing the great job for them mm-hmm. um, as freelancers? That's what I've done in the past is, oh, I, I love the, you know, for example, I love the guys uh, on the Kiss Metrics blog. I just hired a few of the guys, uh, a few of the writers and, and bam, I have people who have at least successfully done something yeah. um, at once or twice um, in, in their careers and that helps kind of that learning curve, um, and then the, la- the last step is is doing this ten times over, right? Um, um, there's there's no perfect way to essentially execute on this. There's the perfect way that you're able to, you know, there's the, there's a way that you're able to execute uh, and repeat. For me, I could do like a seven to ten step process and spend a few hours because I know the ROI is worth it for me. Yeah. That might not be the same case for an e-commerce company. They may be able to only do you know, a few things. They may have less resources or whatnot, but um, whatever you can do that is sustainable for 10 times plus, I think that's, that, that's the kind of right way to get started with content marketing. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I kind of want to, I really like what you had said about you're doing all these things before you even put pen to paper or you know, even start writing your piece of content. And I think that's a big part of it. And one of the things that a lot of people miss out on because they're like, oh, we have an idea. Let's go ahead and write something and then let's try to get it out there. And I I think that's kind of the wrong way to go about it. You kind of have to understand your amplification strategy and how you're going to get that content out there and who it's for. Uh, And and so when, you know, e-commerce, the same type of amplification strategy and resources aren't the same for everybody. And so how would you talk about a company you know maybe it's you know something that's not really that a huge amount of audience is interested in how should they find their amplification strategy and the resources they need to get it in the right hands to get it shared to get eyes on it to you know build that email list how can they understand what resources they need to use yeah so let me tell you this i have a great example for you so um for the last two years i've been working with um, a company called when i work.com they're a scheduling software, employee scheduling, employee management. Not a very promotable topic, not a very sexy thing, right? Yeah. But, but yet we've built 700,000 visitors to the blog monthly. Wow, wow. And the way we did this and the way I think anybody with an industry, I don't want to call it boring, but let's call it you know, <laughs> not marketing or not, it's <laughs> right. not a sexy industry. Right, right. That, that stuff is actually more exciting to me than talking about marketing because – when you can do it for that kind of company, that means you've really kind of um, you've kind of figured a lot of things yeah. out. So let me get to the tip here. So the the tip is figure out who your perso- who your customer is, the persona of that customer, and that ideal kind of people who are going to flock to your product, and write about things that are interesting to them. So in our case, our customers for oneiwork.com are ske- uh, are, are small business owners. Now, small business owners that are own, like they own restaurants, retail, they're not the most savviest. These guys still read print. They still read the newspaper. Yeah. Uh, I figured out where they are and what they like to read. They like to read more inspirational and motivational stuff. They like to read things that, um, that inspire action, not about a specific advanced tactic and like the 10 steps to do that. Yeah. They'll usually figure that out. So uh, we learned this by trial and error, but essentially what we did was we figured out instead of writing about how to, how to better do your scheduling, which is what our software, what, the, what the software does, we wrote about how to manage your team, how to inspire your team, how to, how to lay someone off or let, you know, how to fire somebody, how to hire, how to onboard. 
and then we started writing about um, key uh, content that had a lot of search volume. So um, if you look for like, keywords like HR toolkit, um, we we looked up essentially um, the keyword vo search volume and did keyword research before we created the content. And we went off of something that's promotable and sexy, or not sexy, uh, promotable and has some, you know, there's, again, like the, the rule I mentioned earlier, three ways to promote a piece of content, yeah. but also that has high search volume. And we combined this, we, we combined those two and found keywords that we could then write about, with keywords that turned into topics, which then turned into content. And as a result, um, we built this content machine that's consistently producing things that are promotable. We built the audience, and now the audience is doing a lot of the hard work. And as a result, we rank really well for it. So we have a lot of evergreen traffic and things like that. And again, all around employee management, business, growth, and, and things around what our target demographic would, would want to do. And you could do the exact same thing for you know, dog food if you want. Right? Right. Don't talk about dog food. Talk about your pets. Don't you want your pets to be healthy? Yeah. How to take care of it? You know? And that might not be the same as super promotable content, but within kind of a, uh, what I call a content circle, content that circles your topic, there's something there that's going to be promotable. I, I kind of refuse to say here, no, that it's not. <laughs> right. No, I, yeah, that's, I, I think that, you know, kind of hit the nail on the head of a lot of things that people forget about, um, you know, especially people that, in companies that aren't well versed in content marketing and how it's done, but, you know, understanding what they want to read, what's going to kind of get that emotional aspect and, and be valuable to them. So if you're just tuning in, um, you're listening to Search Talk Live, of course, with Robert O'Haver and Caleb, hey. Caleb McKelvin. Um, you can call into the show at 855-722-0006. That's 855-722-0006. You'll be directed to our man, Dave. Once you hit option one, it can take your questions uh, and shoot them over to us. We can get them, whether it's for Robert, myself, or Sujin, who is on air with us today. Yeah. Uh, we are powered by the Robert Palmer family of companies. Big shout out to them. Go to robertpalmercompanies.com and check out all they have to offer. Yeah, and I have to, to uh, change the uh, hashtag STL chat. Uh, apparently, there's a landfill chat going on. And oh, very cool. <laughs> landfill. <laughs> so use hashtag search talk live if you have a question on Twitter. You can ask us there. We're monitoring that closely. Yeah. Yes. Search talk. Hashtag search talk. Um, no, we can't use that one either. Search talk chat. It's been. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Hashtag search talk chat. All right. All right. Back to the good stuff. All right. All uh, right. Sujin, I think a lot of the things I hear, especially from small businesses, even major companies, is that it's just not working. We're putting in all this time, putting in all this effort. We got somebody in-house doing it, and we're not seeing that ROI, you know, and I think, you know, they just like, well, we're just going to give up on it. I'm a firm believer, and I know you are, that it's it's very beneficial for your business. When, when a company says that, What's your feedback to them, and how do you think they need to go back to the drawing board? Yeah, so when you get to that point, it's usually you failed at one of three points. You either failed at the creating something uh, that people care about, mm -hmm. um, meaning the ideation, the research side of things. You failed at, or you failed at executing the writing of that, meaning you're not writing meaningful or like content people would, you know, love, or you've failed at uh, actually one of four ways. So the third way is you failed at getting the word out about it. And the fourth way is you failed to figure out how to monetize when people, when you do all those three things right. Um, so figure out what your holes are. Figure out like, is it, is it a traffic problem? Is it that uh, no, one, no one really cares what you're doing? Is it, is it that you wrote the wrong things? You know, wh where is your problem? Yeah. Most people, it's one and two. Um, and that's okay. Like it, it, there's, there's no like, there's, there's no... Um, there's no shame in saying, hey, I messed up. It's not working. But I think um, go out there and, and, like I said from the beginning, start with uh, repeating uh, what others are doing and, and, and try to just try to get a win. If you get one win, um, you're, well, psychologically, your motivation to get the second one, bec it becomes much, much, much easier. Yeah. But, but also, you've figured out one thing that works. Great. Now, take that one thing and apply a different topic. And, and, and so... I, I, I kind of break it down to, to that level. And 
one of the things I actually just published a post on LinkedIn today, and um, it's about you know something Rand Fishkin from Moz talks about all the time. It's or has written about um, called 10x content, right? So um, creating something that's so much ten times better than some, anything else out there. So that means you have to write. You could write something incredibly interesting or incredibly better than anything else. Like if there's an article out there, you can go write a book, right? And look, it, writing a book is not like <laughs> you're not going to do this overnight, right? Yeah. This is this is something that takes a long time or may take some some time. So by writing a book or devoting time to write a book, you probably spent time figuring out whether the book like this is going to be the right topic mm-hmm. or I mean it's going to provide you an ROI at all. And the other part of this is also find gaps in the industry. So for for example, if there's a lot of search volume in a space or lots of lots of people interested in something, if you're looking out there and you don't see anything good, great. You found an opportunity where you can create regular content that actually or like that you can create 10x content that may not have to be a book, it could just be regular content, but because there's a gap, um, it, it, it's achievable. And, and what I did, and this is what I did with my, my, my startup, contentmarketer.io, I found a gap in, in content marketing around content promotion. Everybody talks about the first part and then the results, but no one, no one really talks about how to actually get the word out. Right. So I, just, I was one of the first few people to get out there and really just hone in on that part mm-hmm. um, and, and really figure things out, share my stories, and, and now naturally – Content Marketer, again, being the source for how to do that. It's the tool that lets you do that. Yep. Um, we, be, we get cited all the time. So that's, that was my kind of marketing or go-to-market strategy with very little resources and, and really nothing but writing a few, a few pieces of content. And you know, a lot of people have said in the past, like, well, you write for Forbes, you write for Inc., and you probably leverage that. I, no, it's actually the other way around. I leverage what I was doing to get there yeah. and further leverage that. I didn't actually have that when I started. Yeah. No, yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, I mean, um, I, the kind of the next thing I want to kind of roll into, and I'm glad you talked about the whole, okay, you got the beginning, you got the end. Uh, where's all the middle? And I think and I, one of the things that a lot of, content marketers struggle with is the actual outreach process and doing the outreach email, the actual outreach email. And I'll be honest with you, I was terrible at it. You know, the, uh, I was, when I just started out, I had that kind of, uh, traditional, you know, Hey, my name's so-and-so I'm with so-and-so. We really appreciate your content. We read it all the time, yada, 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 the really boring stuff. And, uh, you know, figured out very quickly that that doesn't work and you have to adapt it. And so I kind of want to talk about the outreach email and I'm guessing, and I think I've heard you say this before, is you get quite a bit on your end, correct? Yeah, I usually get 20 or 30. And the funny, funny thing is I actually turn around on them. And uh, I turn around on the people that reach out, um, specifically those who have bad emails, mm-hmm. and turn them into customers, into content marketers. Say, oh, hey, very like, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> hey, you kind of well, got a lead gen right there. <laughs> I, actually, yeah, I'm actually writing a blog post on uh, you know how I do that. But, but anyways, um, yeah, so... So yeah, I get twenty thirty a day roughly, and, and and they're just pitches from anything under the sun. But but really, um, the, the kind of simple tips yeah. uh, to to really write the, a good outreach email is is to keep things simple. Um, very think about creating the shortest thing. If you can say it in one sentence, if you can have your outreach email be one sentence, great. Yeah. More power. I can't, but you could. I could definitely do it in two. But but really, it's being um, it's being personal, um, making a clear call to action, and a clear ask, meaning they should be able to respond to your email in a positive or negative fashion. Mm-hmm. Yes, I will help you or do what you're asking, or no, or maybe later, but that's still a, that's a yes later. We, you know, that's kind of follow-up and things like that. Right. But, but at the end of the day, it's really, it should, you should make, the, make it very, very simple for them. Yeah. And then that comes to the next thing. Make your get to you what you want or your point very, very quickly. Um, make the post very, very scannable. And don't be afraid to name drop, right? And so what I mean by name drop is 
don't throw like Mark Cuban in, in your emails or uh, <laughs> don't, don't stretch it. But yeah. like if in this case you guys are, you know, you guys are hosting a podcast, you, you may be able to get people if you just include the four, five, ten, hundred people you've interviewed in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, that's validation alone for most people. So you're name dropping people that, um, that you've, you've, you've worked with and, and maybe throw some stats in there. There's another kind of another, another great example is like, well, if you have, if you've sold, you know, for me on my website, I have in the last year, I've sold 30,000 copies of my eBooks. That, that one kind of phrase or sentence above the call to action for my books helps me get more sales because people think and know I'm, uh, you know, 30,000 people have trusted me. They'll have to take my word for it. But the same thing goes in an email, right? Yeah, no. that's a validation. And 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 again, like, be clear what you want. Yeah. Um. And my kind of signature here, and and my my um my signature move is signing off with something really interesting. Mm-hmm. So if you can't get them in the email, you might be able to get them in your um in your closing statement. I actually sign off most of my cold emails with your biggest fan, you know, Sujan Patel, <laughs> or hugs and kisses. <laughs> and it works. Well, you, yeah, you capture that attention. Well, I think that's really interesting because, <laughs> uh, and, a, and an awesome point, I think a lot of, you know, I necessarily don't think about that when I'm writing this outreach email, even if I necessarily have some type of relationship with them because you figure, well, okay, they open my email they're going to read the topic or whatever I'm offering and then they're not going to care about the end when it actually could re-grab their attention, so to speak, and and kind of get them back, will gain their interest a little bit. That's definitely really smart because, I mean, at the end of they're like, wow, that's different. You yeah, know, it kind of like, stands like, out. Hold like, on, what do you say? Yeah, I've actually, with my hugs and kisses email, <laughs> um, the funny thing is I've actually um, met somebody in person and like the like randomly right I, I was walking down the street or something ran into somebody i knew and i, I guess i emailed him i guess in the mm-hmm. past and uh I, I no sorry i didn't email him i emailed somebody at his company and i wanted to do a guest post or something on their site that email i sent with the sign off of hugs and kisses uh the person later told me uh in that conversation that it got sent out to everyone in the <laughs> office and then he's like like that was like my thing, my connection with that person. That's and we're awesome. good friends now. Did he ask for a hug? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was willing to give him a yeah, hug. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, you know, when I talk to other people in the industry, you know, about outreach, most of them have that kind of very frustrated feel to them um you know it's just a lot of no responses none of this and i think the one thing that i can get from it is they have no idea what that person wants to hear and and you don't necessarily have to go in so much depth uh when you speak on this but you know how can you kind of do that little bit of that research i think a lot of research goes into it but how can you find where you need to uh, devote your attention on finding what somebody would want to hear from you and what you're going to get a response from yeah, so great question. And and really I'm gonna I'm gonna step back one step. Yeah. So it's when you're sending an outreach email or when you're when you're like leveraging influence or when you're asking for something, it's actually not about you. It's not about what you can get and getting that response. Mm-hmm. It's actually what you can give. So I always start if I wanna get if I wanna get a link, if I wanna do outreach on help if I wanna do any type of outreach. I've already started a month before building that relationship. So first and foremost, success, you have to invest into a positive response, invest into that relationship. And that not only means building that relationship prior to reaching out or, you know, really attempting to build that relationship. It also means you have to, it needs to be a two way relationship. And most two way cold relationships don't start off by getting value first. It starts out by giving value. Mm-hmm. So I always start by giving value first. Uh, and then you have to think about what, what, of what value do I have? So for, for example, um, and one of my favorite techniques, and, and, and it's also you know, really the framework Content Marketer IO is built off of, is, is to quote and cite three to five people, individuals, in an article. Three to five of the most relevant or you know, people you can get and, and, and sometimes you don't 
start with you, if you're like let's say you have a brand new site you don't have anybody you don't know anybody in this space well start by citing people people have said things on the web forever right yeah. so grab it quote them then you reach out to them and say hey look what i just did you just gave them something of value mm-hmm. whether you gave them a you know your your this is your first blog post or this is your 500th blog post you gave something of value to somebody and um it may not be as much value. It may, you know, if you're going to email um, guys like Gary V, that might not be much value. But start with the kind of middle and up and comers, and um, you know, there's something there. But, but anyways, my point being is, start by giving, right? Give so much that you're they're just wanting like, what can I do for you? Yeah. And and, and that's when you've kind of built a value, like a relationship. That's a pretty good advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's very <laughs> solid. Uh, you know, I like the word value, be, being able to understand what you can provide to that, what value you provide to them and start building that relationship. Uh, no, very awesome. Uh, now, if you don't mind, Sujan, we'd like to get into kind of some of the questions that we were sent over through social media from some of our listeners. Um, uh, and before we get started that, doing that, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you're listening to Search Talk Live with Robert O'Haver and Kayla McKelvin. If you'd hey. like to call into the show, you can call in at 855-722-0006, 855-722-0006. Option one, you'll be shot over to our man, Dave, who is managing the board. We really appreciate all the work uh, that Dave does for Search Talk Live. And we are power, uh, powered by Robert Palmer and the Robert Palmer family of companies. Go to robertpalmercompanies.com, check out everything they have to offer, some pretty cool stuff. Yes, and, and I also wanted to add, if you want to call into the show, ask some questions. The number is 855-722-0006, option one. You can hit us up on Twitter with your hashtag search talk chat. chat. Yes, sir. And uh, yes, yeah, that's, that's it. That's good. Let's All right, going. let's get into some, <laughs> some of the questions we were sent over. Okay, so uh, and... First one is kind of centered around social media and how do you, how can you effectively use social media and content marketing? Kind of what is its role in amplifying your content? Yeah. Um, well, first and foremost, it's, it's, I mentioned the three ways to, to get the word out. Mm-hmm. It's one, it could be one of the three ways, right? Um, it, it's, it's really that simple. It's, it's sharing it and, and uh, it's sharing it to your audience and, and, and using that to build your audience um, so, so I guess the, the simple answer is leverage it to promote your content, yeah. um, and, and then build and build a connection with your audience in a very light way, right? Like for example, people might not be willing to share your content, they, but they might be willing to follow you, right? Like that at the very least they might do one small thing. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's a, that's kind of a lightweight way to get in. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I think one of the you know, always, if you're going to, if you included, a you know, authority site or, you know, some authority in your content, if you're going to share it, you know, kind of tag them in it, you know, let them know that, Hey, you know, we shared this, uh, you know, reach out to their audience a little bit. Maybe you can get a little more interaction. Yeah. I was going to add to that. I was going to say that, you know, you got to stay on topic as well. Right. I mean, you have to, you, you, you don't want to talk about one thing to your audience and then jump on to another topic. You know, you, you got to kind of stay in that, your your niche or industry correct yeah yeah exactly like don't be all over the place mm-hmm. find find your kind of find your content circle right find your first and foremost find your audience and, and the same thing goes for social content anything you're going to do on the digital space advertising um and then and then find a content circle for things your audience will be interested around what they love what they're passionate about what they do mm-hmm. Not maybe, but maybe even like what they're, what they do outside of work, um, or outside of professional, uh, their professional life, um, and, and write about that. Share that, um, and, and you know that's that's kind of how you kind of do it. And if, yeah. like, to, give you, to give you an example, if you're Whole Foods, you're not just talking about your sales, uh, your, your foods, and the newest items you have on the shelf. You're right. talking about you're talking about sustainable living you're talking about health you know benefits. health benefits of food you're talking about like you know g- giving back to the community what you can do to get involved you know things like that um again green and green living and and you might be even talking about tesla if you're 
food, whole foods. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There, there's so much kind of cross pollination there, but but you're going to be talking about that on social. You're going to talk about. You're going to might be writing about that. You might be um, even doing advertising to that audience. So so there's kind of so much things around that. Very nice. Um, and and the second one is a little bit about social media. About social media as well is. Uh, you know, this person has a kind of a small uh, blog, a small blog site. Uh, how can they find influencers in, the, in their niche and how can they kind of reach out, interact and start building those relationships through social media? Uh, you're saying how do, how do people find them? Is that? Yeah. Is there certain tools that you use to find those influencers that are sharing your content, maybe are interested in the type of content you're sharing? How can you find those influencers to, to build those relationships to where they might be interested in what you're providing? All right. Great question. Okay. So I have a lot. I want to make sure I heard it right so I can give you yeah. my really wordy response. Um, so there's a lot of tools <laughs> you, can use. you can use BuzzSumo, one of my favorite tools. Um, they should probably just pay me for that because I say that all the time. <laughs> yeah, 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 I've heard you say it quite um, a bit. It's, it's a great tool. It's a great tool to find influencers in a space. You can see who shared something. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the way to use it is not necessarily who shared your stuff. It's actually who shared stuff in your industry that's doing a great job, right? Like I mentioned like the people that are doing a, a, an awesome job. Um, that's who you want to find out um, what, what people shared. Uh, and, and so you can kind of do something um, – um, I, I guess so you can do something close to that or whatnot. I use tools like mention.com, uh, also BuzzSumo. Um, there's, there's brand 24. Um, those are all kind of like social monitoring tools yeah. to find, um, to find, um, competitors and what they're doing. So I monitor all the competitors or the big players in the space and I see, I see what they're doing. I also monitor my own brand and my own company. But what I'm doing is I'm looking at what they're doing. I'm trying to find a dissect their strategy and you'll find the influencers there. You'll find how they actually go and penetrate. Um, you'll find out what they're doing and then you can get started that way. So um, again, the simplest way, use a tool like BuzzSumo, use follower Wong, type in a keyword, use Google, right? Like go into Google and type in top quote, insert keyword here in um, experts or expert roundups, you know, keyword plus expert roundups can get you probably any influencer um, and, and, and look through the, the search results and, you know, go to the ones that have like a laundry, like a list style post yeah. and you'll find the influencers there. If you want to go as advanced as like the tools I mentioned, um, you can do that as well. So you, you can, what I recommend is I always start with the MVP. That start with the Google search or the the BuzzSumo search or the follower wonk search, and then move into more advanced stuff as you find it working for you. Yeah, no, very cool. Great ways to find uh, those influencers. Uh, the next question we have uh, we've actually we've touched on it on this show before, but uh, getting some somebody with your expertise and your your background to touch on it as well. Uh, what are the SEO benefits to content marketing? How do those go hand in hand? And, and what can we see from that from an SEO standpoint? Yeah, so one, you get fresh content, right? Mm-hmm. You're getting content, you're getting people back, you're getting Google, the crawlers back to your site over and over and over again. There's a correlation. I mean, I don't want to go too technical because I like to keep things as digestible as possible. Yeah. But you're show- every time statistically, at least from my experience, every time I publish an article, for that day, my site, and because I, it goes out to my email list, and every time my email list gets sent something, um, my site ranks better that day. Yeah. So there's some sort of, I, I mean, maybe um, SEOs may argue with this, but that's the only thing that's a different thing. That's yeah. the only difference of why my search volume goes up. There's that benefit. Um, there's also the links and the mentions. Um, I look at links, I look at mentions as the new currency as links. So what I mean by mention is when somebody is referencing your brand, your name, um, your site, whether they link to you or not, it's irrelevant. Yeah. Um, as long as they mention you, that's going to give you more weight on to that, you know, to, to, to your brand. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's that direct benefit. Then there's creating something that references your content. So for example, um, 
you can create evergreen content that then also ranks directly. So not only does it help you rank for the keywords maybe you're trying to target as a direct acquisition, it can, you can also use that same piece of content to directly rank for something that's indirect to your audience. So like, let's say the Whole Foods example, or let's, actually let's go with dog food. In writing content can help you rank for the keyword dog food, but you could also rank for healthy puppy live, you know, healthy puppies and <laughs> with your content and, and maybe like how to, tr you know, how to take care of your puppy. Um, and, and you can rank for both. Now, the, the, the latter will probably not help you give you direct sales. It might help you build your brand and, and indirect sales and traffic, mm -hmm. but then you can retarget and essentially turn, maybe turn that into a customer. But, um, yeah, that, that's kind of, th those, those are the ways I think that can help you. And, um, you turn, I think, you, you turn your site from a transactional and a company to a resource and education. Yeah. And by doing that, you become the authority. Yeah. And uh, what does Google want? Authority. Yeah. That's, I think that be, having that, being able to educate the user and have that, you know, information. And like you said, being a resource is very powerful for your company and your brand, really, no matter what niche you're in. So it's something that's it's, it's pretty big. I think something a lot of companies can strive for. I have a question real quick. The, now, what are you doing as far as when you, you have your mailing list? What, what are you doing other than creating, you know, great content to get people to sign up? Are you doing pop-ups? Hey, join our mailing list. What, what is it you're doing on your site? Yeah, so great question. So to be honest, the simplest way, the most effective way I've found is to use tools like Sumo Me, um, or like Hello Bar, and, and, and do like, what, what, like a, what's a pop-up, um, either... Uh, kind of on the bottom right of your site, um, you can A/B test this. Um, mm. I've tested like a, a full site takeover, where like when you first visit the site and you're coming from like for me, you're coming directly to the site. I probably don't want you to go to see a pop up because you might have come from an email list already. So I, I avoid that. But if you're coming from anything else like social, you're going to get my welcome mat that like prompts you to sign up. So a compelling call to action with a prompt to sign up. Gotcha. Most of the time. Simply asking people to subscribe does the trick. You'll probably get anywhere between like a half percent to three percent conversion rate. Okay. Um, content upgrades is a great way. So within your content, you can at the bottom or throughout the post, hey, sign up for my email list or download this ebook, or you can even download, like, turn that same article into a downloadable um, PDF. Yeah. And it's simple. Like you use like a, I use a Chrome extension. I don't do this on my personal site. I do it for some of my clients. Yeah. Uh, but I use like print friendly and PDF. I think a Chrome extension, mm -hmm. and I just turn a a blog post into a PDF, and I put that as a content upgrade. So nice. that's another way. And and for me personally, I I launched eBooks. So um, my eBooks. Every time someone buys them, they get um, they get subscribed to to my email list and. I don't spam people. I just send them a weekly newsletter, which is also coincidentally, it's just a blog post. It's nothing fancy. Right. So what are you, are you waiting any amount of time? They, I mean, as soon as they hit the size of this thing popping up, are you giving them 30 seconds or? Um, honestly, I let the companies like Hello Bar and Sumo Me and these, these, these tools, Optin Monster, let them optimize. Yeah. Uh, they have these settings. I don't know exactly what they um, what they do um, at least as a start, and then then you start to optimize based off what works. Like I don't want to say, hey, I do it this way because right. that might not work for most people. But yeah, nice. Uh, now we can kind of I kind of want to shift direction a little bit because I know you're involved in a lot. Uh, you have um, you know your co-founder uh, of a couple of tools and companies content marketer, narrow and other things. Um, you know, I kind of want to talk about those a little bit because I think they can be very helpful and very useful for, you know, people in the digital marketing and content marketing industry. And so when, when people, let's start with content marketer, um, what is it and how is it going to benefit somebody that's, that's doing content marketing and digital marketing? Yeah. So, um, with content marketer, I wanted to do something really, really powerful. It just to help people promote content. Mm -hmm. uh, and reach out to influencers, something I pretty much mastered over the years and um, my previous agency um, learned a lot the hard way. So we do two things. We do two things pretty well. Uh, one is we help you find the contact, contact information and email or Twitter handle of influencers. And what that, the way we do that is you can either use 
ancillary tools like Buzzsumo, find the people there, and then import that CSV into our tool, Custom Marketer IO, or you could scan your blog posts. Uh, obviously, we prefer the latter. Um, if, you, if you've mentioned influencers, if you've mentioned anyone in your article, mm-hmm. or are scanning a list, uh, which is, might be an expert roundup, or you're building a list, you can scan a URL and we'll find contact information. Um, and then you can reach out to them. So you know, your email outreach and why I talk about email outreach and why I actually do more of it is to help pe- educate people on how to better do it using our tool. And I mean, we'll, we'll better do it. I, hopefully, they leverage our tool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, it's, really, uh, it's really cool. You have different templates and actually proven templates that work when you're out doing the outreach, right? Yeah, I actually put every time I get a success more than five times using the same or similar template, I actually put it into Content Marketer for everyone to use. Very so cool. I'm awesome. guinea pig here, and uh, and I'll continue to do that. And I actually have a few influencers and a few people that are doing that. We're, we're pretty much crowdsourcing it with people that with the with templates that are working. So um, we're, we're going to continue to build up that templates. And I wanted to remove any excuse somebody would have to not promote content. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, with with we have a few other products underneath the Content Marketer IO brand that help you do that in different ways. So we have another brand, another tool called Notifier, which is essentially a very, very stripped down version of Content Marketer, only specifically targeting um, Twitter. So um, it helps you find the Twitter handles of a blog post yeah. and then lets you tweet at them. And if you have a lot, you can schedule it and it's a it's actually free. So I wanted to like... I wanted to take even the money barrier and like I don't know how to use this every excuse off the table um, to, with with Content Marketer IO. So with Notifier, it's completely it's, it's free. There's a there's a premium version if you want to like schedule it and kind of get a little more advanced. But mm-hmm. but really, it's this super easy tool. If you it's free, you should just every time you write a blog post, scan your URL and you know write. If you if again, my tip is. If you write a blog post or an article or content in general, try to mention or cite three to five people, quote them and build that relationship if you can, and then you plug it into Notifier and bam, it, it just gener- it finds those people and then it generates the, uh, the tweet. And by the, the very act of mentioning people, they're going to want, I guarantee you half of those guys are going to um, you know, share it themselves. And wow, you can do the same thing with brands and stuff like that. Yeah. That is amazing. That is huge. I mean, the whole cool thing about content marketer is, you know, I think a lot of those doing content marketing and digital marketing kind of everything's kind of scattered and it's hard to get things streamlined. And this is something that's going to help them do that. Stay organized, get organized, stay focused with what they're trying to do, what the end goal is, how they're communicating uh, while they're doing their outreach and actually doing effective outreach and, uh, and communicating effectively to get those responses. So I think this is an awesome tool and somebody, something that everybody needs to check out. Yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, so and and then and note I mean, I'm sorry, Narrow. I have so many, so many tools. I I kind of get mixed up. <laughs> right. Uh, Narrow is it, it helps you build your Twitter following, and it's it's it, it's a tool for we're, we're going to further build out our Twitter automation. Essentially, yeah. um, you enter in a keyword, or I use usernames and websites. So anytime someone shares something, we'll go out and engage with that user, and and a portion of those people. Um, uh, follow you back, and you're essentially building that audience that way by engaging with something very specific to a keyword or um, your target demographic. Yeah, yeah, very cool. When he's talking about content marketer, those of you who are listening, it's contentmarketer.io. Yes, the way, if you want to look at the website, yeah, I would definitely go check it out. Um, I, I believe I read something in one of your recent articles that you you have something new uh, going on or just released. It's connector app. Is, is that correct? I don't think I've, I haven't had time to check it out yet, but uh, is that something y'all have going on that's new? Yep, yep. Connector app is our latest app. So Content Marketer has has now three three apps within that brand, which mm-hmm. is we have the, the original Content Marketer app, which is now just called Marketer, Notifier, which is just for Twitter outreach, and then Connector, which is just for email outreach. So um, it you don't have to rely on us to find your emails. It's just simply for doing email outreach. Um, think of it as like a kind of yes swear on steroids. We can set up follow-up sequences and, uh, and, and things like that. Again, also with templates to, to start with. So our, our reasoning is that we wanted to start with why you're doing outreach. Mm-hmm. And we'll, we'll actually adjust the templates and UX 
um, the user flow to help you better do what you're doing. So if you're doing it for sales outreach or promoting your content or you know, recruiting guest bloggers, whatever it is, you're going to be shown kind of information to help you best do that. Wow. Very cool. That's some pretty <laughs> awesome stuff. Uh, if you're tuning in, uh, we have a few minutes left on the show. Uh, you're listening to Search Talk Live. Uh, you can call on in with your questions, 855-722-0006, 855-722-0006, option one. Uh, go ahead and call on in or tweet at us at Search Talk Live and using the hashtag Search Talk Chat. Uh, I do have a question for you, Sujin. How do you manage to handle all of this? How do you manage to do it all? Because I know you're writing a lot for a lot of these big publications. you got all this stuff going on. You know, you got to be going 24 hours a day, just nonstop. How do you manage to kind of put all this together and not go crazy? <laughs> well, I, I can't tell you about how I don't go crazy. <laughs> Sometimes there, that does happen. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but to be honest, I think it's something I'm just super passionate about. Um, it's something that um, I, actually, I, I love doing and, mm. and I don't consider it work. So on Saturday mornings, I jump out of bed and actually, you know, work a couple hours and whatnot. Yeah. I think some of the things I've created, uh, some workflows and processes, especially specifically around content production. So I have, um, I have an editor that helps me kind of polish things up so I don't have to worry about the grammar and, 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 and spelling. Uh, I still, you know, try to do it, but I like, got something I noticed I was hung up on before. Mm -hmm. Same thing. I have a person that can help me do research and they help me find examples and data and, and kind of do some of the, the tedious work around proving your point. So what that, what that lets me do is focus on things that I'm really good at and helps me um, kind of scale where I can, so I took from writing an article for like around like 2000 words from taking like uh, around um, two, three hours to 45 two minutes to an hour just by helping, you know, not having to worry about the grammar. Yeah, the, you know, and not having to worry about every little research point. I worry about the end, and and so even if I didn't have those pieces, now that I have this new workflow, um, I've kind of like comp compartmentalized the things I look through or worry about as I'm doing tasks. Oh, very cool. I mean, that's a good use of your time and a good way to get things streamlined and focused. So that's that's pretty awesome. I'm pretty amazed how you can do all this. So it makes me kind of feel bad how i struggle over one blog post or something like that when i see guys like you doing all this stuff and and getting it going and having them putting all of it out yeah, um i've got no, a go i got a question from twitter yeah um so a uh, person's asking what um you know if someone a writer wants to write for say forbes or anything i mean what how does someone do that I mean, you don't have to answer that if you don't want to but no no that's <laughs> that's um so that's a question I get asked so often. Hey, I it, can only it, imagine. It's a loaded answer. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to tweet it out with that same hashtag okay. so that person has that answer okay. uh, or everyone has that answer. It's a video about 20 minutes long. It go through the steps. But essentially, it's working your way up, building your writer resume, um, writing resume, getting a couple wins. Um, the short version is start with your own blog, work your way up to guest blogging, blogging on other sites that have an audience work your way up past that, do, right. you know, do, get a couple wins there, get to a little bigger site, uh, maybe an industry site or kind of a site that has a bigger audience, um, and then go after the second or ter third tier type site. So like once you get a couple wins, five or ten wins as a whole, you're ready to pitch. Uh, by the way, all of this can be done through a cold pitch email or cold pitch emails. I get, I get people all the time emailing me saying, hey, you taught me how to do this. It actually works. So like, I know it works. And I <laughs> right. get enough responses that I know it works uh, as long as you put in your time. Um, don't overreach. What I mean by that is if you're writing, if this is your first time writing, you're not going to get on Forbes for a long time. Right. Be aware of that, right? Mm -hmm. it's, there's no magic in this. I'm telling you the process. Um, but, but after you have like maybe five to seven wins, when I say wins, I mean these big publishers, they care about they, they're going to be looking at the traffic. They're looking at your depth in knowledge. They're looking at your punctuation. So, like, um, you know, do your research on that person, or do your research on um, on who you, on who you're pitching, what site, what they care about, what they what's written in the past, and and make sure you have a couple wins, at least three to five wins, where 
you've knocked it out of the park, you've gotten thousand plus shares and every time you level up to this like from your blog, maybe a hundred shares is meaningful. To an industry blog, anything under a thousand is probably not that meaningful. Yeah. For Forbes or Inc. Entrepreneur, anything under 10,000 shares is probably not a win. So like that's the kind of levels wow. they're looking for. <laughs> and it sounds daunting, but it's very doable if you write around the topics we talked about early in the conversation yeah. that can help, you know, get attract that audience. Yeah. I think a lot of people try to take down those, I call them big fish without really building their resume. And one of the component, one of the components of your resume is your own site. You know, I think they really do take a look at your own site and the type of content you're putting out, the type of interaction your audience has with your own site. So, you know, that may be need to be your, your main focus for the time being, before you actually go out and outreach to these major publications. Yeah, and, and, and I'm going to tell you one little secret here. Figure out why you want to write for those publications. Yeah, yeah. Is it, you know, like, is, is it because you see all the other people doing it? Right. If that's the case, um, you're going to, by the time you get there, it's going to be pretty late, right? You're right. going to have to do a lot of work, and that might not be the winning strategy, right? So um, I'll, I'll tell you about, like, Snapchat or Periscope and, and these emerging networks, uh, social networks, that there, no one's really that. Those areas are open for the taking. Meaning, like, you, if you just became the guy or girl who's just a Periscope expert in whatever your industry is, that's going to give you probably much more bang than waiting to get on Forbes and working your way out there. I'm yeah. not. Just, I don't mean to deter people from doing that. Maybe you can do both. But um, I've tested both. Periscope and Snapchat, and actually uh, more extensively on video and Periscope, the amount of engagement, the amount of like credibility, and, and how how much quality engagement you can get with the with the reader, or viewer, or, or actually in this case a viewer, not a listener, um, is far. It's like a hundred, uh, ten to hundred x of what you. Uh-oh. Hello. With a larger audience, and so at the end of the day, if your audience, if your goal is to build this audience and build a following, build your personal brand, why don't you just get? Why don't you go after smaller networks or newer networks and get really high engagement? Yeah, yeah. No, that's an awesome tip. Because Susan, I, I'll go ahead. And we, I'm sorry. We have gotten pretty much to the end of the show. If you can hold on until we uh, sign yeah. off, um, we want to thank you for coming to the show. Yes, thank you so much. We really appreciate your show. time. Uh, a lot of awesome content. Uh, we definitely appreciate it, Shujin, you taking time out of your busy schedule to join us uh, and, and being here with us and sharing your knowledge. I know our audience got a lot out of it. I got a lot out of it. I, I got a lot. Yeah, of I'm it. sure Robert got a lot of it. So we appreciate it. If you could stick around just for one second. Uh, we appreciate y'all listening today. You were tuning into Search Talk Live. Uh, we, Every Tuesday. Yes, yeah, so we always appreciate our audience and everything you do. Uh, you can always connect with us on at Search Talk Live or on Facebook, all the social media. iTunes. Uh, yes, download soon us on be, iTunes. Uh, soon to be iHeartRadio. Yes. Um, Check us out on Sprecher. Yep. Go to Sprecher.com. See us old shows. Or you can go to SearchTalkLive.com. You can hear, if you missed a lot of this uh, show, you can go and check it out. We will put it up on the website today, so you can go check it out or past shows that we've had. Appreciate you tuning in. Make sure you tune in next week at 3.30 Eastern Standard Time uh, at searchtalklive.com, listen live, yeah, and we've check got us out. Chris Goward, from founder of CEO C- and CEO of uh, Wider Funnel. Yes. We're going to go over conversion optimization, which is pretty uh, awesome for site owners. Uh, thanks for your support, guys, yep. and we'll see you next week. Checking out. Search Talk Live is a presentation of the Robert Palmer family of companies.